So after you've done your first picture, give each student another clean sheet, um, clean piece of paper. You'll also need your sunscreen and you will need your paper plate and cotton tips. So in this version, instead of getting the students to just draw with the pen, you can do it in two ways. You can ask them to draw a picture and then fill in the picture with sunscreen, or you can get them to just draw with the sunscreen itself. And so I might just do a little quick drawing right now. The one thing to warn students about is that permanent marker, you can actually lift off permanent marker with sunscreen because of the, um, the solvents that the, the two compounds actually lift each other. So if you ever accidentally get permanent marker on say a plastic surface or some surface that is not porous, you can use sunscreen to lift it off. And um, it doesn't work on wood because it's porous. So just keep that in mind. Right, so let's do a really quick picture. don't need a lot of sunscreen. Oh, I mean, it depends on how many students you've got. So if you've got a lot of students sharing your sheet, um, your sharing the sunscreen. Now, the thing I recommend is doing quite different amounts of sunscreen in different sections. So I'm going to do something quite simple. I'm going to make the sun. And you can see sunscreen doesn't always go on evenly because we're going onto a plastic surface. So you'll find that there'll be lines and that's actually a good thing because what you want them to do is see the difference between thick and thin. So I could add a bit more here. So I could do a nice um, spot and you can, you can use your fingers if you're not allergic to sunscreen. Please don't be scared to, to do this however you like because it's all about oh look at my beautiful circle is gone let's try that again might leave a few of those lines in there and I've seen some lovely artistic students come through who I hope I've been able to influence well because Hopefully they will be able to see the, the correlation between science and art. And in the in the historical days, science and art wasn't that separated. There was a lot of crossover. So you can see that's it's just a simple picture in this case. So in some sections, the other thing I do suggest is putting like a smear of sunscreen. So what I might try in this one is adding some cloud. And, um, you know, the age old, let's add a flying bird into the image. So you can see you can do both things, or you could do this just with the sunscreen. You don't have to be incredibly tidy to do this sort of stuff. And just for your reference, let's have a look. See, if I rub, if they make a mistake with the permanent marker, they can actually rub things out. And so you can use your finger to rub that off if you really want. So let's just finish this off. You can see I can put some thinner sections, um, maybe just below. So here, if I really smear it, you can see sunscreen's going on, but it's quite thin. And again, so you can be as creative or lack of creation as you want. The thing I don't recommend is having them cover the whole thing in sunscreen. That, that doesn't work at all. Um, you need them to be able to see the difference between sunscreen no sunscreen so hence a nice clear spot down there okay so now we've got our picture i think we should go and expose it
see, sorry that's a little bit out of focus, but our second picture, so let's rinse it so we can see what happens. So get your students to pop it out of the page. And actually that's worked out really nicely. You can see the lots of sunscreen, still really dark, not lots of sunscreen, uh, it's quite light. So let's pop that in the water. And this one actually I can start to see the really, because I haven't overexposed these bits, it's actually, I can actually see that moving now. It's actually changing. So the other thing that happened when we exposed this sheet of paper is that the, the clouds actually came over the sun. And so we weren't getting the change quite so quickly. You can do this experiment on a cloudy day. It just takes a little longer to expose. This is quite sensitive paper, so it will do it quite quickly. The only day that really won't work is if it's pouring rain. There are other activities I'd like to do with this, including looking at UV in shade, which we can use this paper for, and I tend to reserve that for older age groups because it's a little bit more involved, but it's definitely worth trying. And you can see that that picture's nearly faded already. So this is the, this is the chemicals are starting to rinse out quite quickly. So this is nearly done. And I'm starting to see what, I don't know if you can, but I can see some really white sort of pale features here where I had some of the thick pieces of sunscreen above it. So when you're starting to see that, you can see that the picture is nearly ready to be dried. So, same as before. Shake it off and pat it dry. Really simple, nice and straightforward. So we can't see a lot of a picture there, but that's a good thing as we'll see. I'll put this aside and let it dry. Now I just wanted to show you our first sheet of paper, which has only just been sitting there for about five minutes. And you can see it's already starting to darken where the UV was exposed and the lighter sections where it was black are becoming more pronounced. So this is just a few minutes of drying. Later on, we'll see what this looks like and we'll, I'll uh, flash forward in time in a minute. Um, but I'll just um, give you an idea of what this might look like in just a couple of hours. Okay, so this is what I had a student do and decided they didn't want to keep. Um, and you can see these are sunscreen and it almost looks like bubbles. And I just think that is really great. So we can see here student, the student put in very thick amounts of sunscreen here and here. Quite thin amounts here, but still obvious. Um, some others. So we can see the beautiful blue and that beautiful dark blue is called Prussian blue, which is caused by that particular reaction. So. Hopefully you'll be able to see your results on your on the piece of paper we just did very, very soon. So we can see that our final picture demonstrates the application of sunscreen. So if you put lots of sunscreen on, you're going to prevent the reaction from occurring, which is kind of what you want to tell the students when it comes to sunscreen and sunburn. And you can see that there's a nice nice effect there and the thing I love about this picture is that you can see the detail of the actual image the lines within the lines the student created when they made their picture so you can see like the little individual lines um, it's just just interesting how much effect the UV has had on these pictures so I hope your experiments go as effectively and that your students make some fabulous sun pictures as well with some UV radiation and some sunscreen.
And before we finish up, I just wanted to show you a few things that you can also do with it. So here's one that I did with three different types of sunscreen. Thick amounts, thin amounts, did it with different types. So that's a bit of fun. Here's one that I used with a slinky. And here's one that I did with a, a kind of a slinky bracelet, which gave an interesting effect, which is actually produced from this little guy. And uh, the shadows and shape around it from the angle of the sun were very interesting as well. And if you really want, you can just use things like overhead transparencies to make some interesting pictures. So hopefully that gives you some ideas of what you can do with your class. Now, if you're at all concerned about the chemicals left over in the water, as I said, they're non-toxic. You can put this straight down the drain or perhaps water the garden because this is quite safe to add to um, just wash water or drain water. So maybe water the garden with it. That's usually the best thing to do with it. <music>